Hi and welcome to the NERPG Engine 0.8.2 Alpha release livestream. In this livestream we'll be covering a few of the new features in this release and specifically we'll be covering the new 1750 plus public domains icons and tileable textures as well as the UMA sample clothing and the non-UMA mechanim character and the animated fish and dragons. If you don't already have a copy of any RPG, you can pick one up from nerpg.org slash downloads in Unity package format. In this release, we have added a lot of new icons and basically everything that you'll see here today comes from opengameart.org and it's all completely public domain. So the new stuff that was added to the engine was this little icon here from Blarumian, these cave icons here from Blarumian, these dragon icons here from Blarumian, these resource icons here from Meli, and after I go through and finish showing which icons we are or have added uh, to the engine, then I'll actually do a demo and we'll go into the game and look at some of the example content and see how some of this stuff got integrated and what it looks like actually in the game. These uh, axes here from Meli, these uh, fantasy swords here from Meli, this fantasy mage set from Meli, and from Sethiel, basically all of these weapons, this is an absolutely amazing weapon set, which includes these 3D models and all of these icons as well. So we've got these nice swords here, a bunch more different swords. Actually, there's like six sets full of different sorts of swords. And you'll see those in the engine here as well. And then there's a good variety of shield icons available from Sethiel as well. And a few sets of different colored staffs. And then some nice battle axes as well. There's also these nice uh, tileable dirt textures available as well. And those are now in the engine. And these tileable grass textures also from Sethiel and these awesome tileable stone textures from Sethiel as well. And this really cool mine test set has some nice textures in it and those are all in the engine and it also has some icons in it as well. And this ground crack is really cool. I made a bunch of um, like ability icons out of that so we'll see those later in the video as well. We've got these uh, hand-painted stone textures, lava and stone and underwater from Meli, and these uh, hand-painted dirt textures as well. The nice fantasy potion set from Meli, the fantasy coin set from Meli, the fantasy crystal set from Meli, the fantasy parchment set from Meli, and from Drummy Fish, some Worm Sun icons. There's a lot of really cool icons in here. They're sort of low resolution, um, but if you sort through them, you can get a bunch of really neat stuff for different abilities or just different avatars. And then this RPG UI icon set from Owlish Media and the entire interaction system in the game is actually based around this icon set now. And we also have some avatars here from Drummy Fish that were part of a dungeon crawl. And then these flare weapons from Clint Bellinger. This is a nice set of icons. And we also have these feathers from Moomoo. They're a good set of icons as well. And these potions from VK, another nice set of icons. And then a few little mini avatars here from um, Blamurian again. And this awesome armor set from uh, 
Clint Bellinger, Blumurian, Crowline, and Justin Nickel. And this is uh, great because it's got pretty much all of your main armor types, the cloth, the leather, the uh, chain, and the mail. And then we'll also be including in the engine, this is just another version of the same set, um, some cool spell icons here um, from Scribe. And I've made a bunch of different multicolored versions of these, basically. So we have more than just fire. We've got ice and poison and stuff now, too. And this awesome set from Moo Moo, which is more sort of variations and, uh, and multicolors and elemental versions of the... Um, of the flare items. A little avatar from Bl Blarumian, <laughs> Blarumirian. Um, and then I've taken and cleaned up a, a whole pile of these icons, um, used the best ones from them, and made some recolors uh, so they, they look pretty good once they're in the game. And those were from PolyUW. And then this uh, Thorns spell here from Scribe. And this uh, Ice spell here from Scribe as well. And I made a bunch of different versions of this, like Fire as well as Ice. And then these uh, cool backgrounds from PolyUW as well. And those are actually used just as uh, icons. And then we've got a Skybox here from Luke.Rustle. TLD, um, and he's actually got his own website here, it looks like, as well. Uh, Rust LTD, there we go. Um, so this is kind of cool, and this skybox is, is pretty awesome. I like it. You'll see that as well. And then we have some more uh, like spell and ability icons from PolyUW, and uh, you'll see those in the engine as well. And then, of course, I have saved the absolute best for last. We now have an animated swimming fish icon in the game. And we have a dragon that you can ride. And we will be riding this dragon around pretty much for the entire demo. So let's get started. I've just basically got a fresh install here of NERPG Engine 0 0.8.2 Alpha. And um, I'm using it, I, I've connected it to my existing saves, so if you look in your Unity project settings, um, no matter where your project is or, or where what Unity um, like project you have open, if you're using the engine and you put in the same values for the company name, product name, and version, it'll get saved in the same spot. So even though this is a brand new project, I can still pick up my old player prefs and save files just by putting the same values in there. So that's just kind of a neat trick. Um, so I, I guess first, um, let's just demonstrate the box man and the new Uma armor. So I'll see here I have in my player manager, um, my default non-UMA player, so it looks like we'll start a new game and we'll be demoing Boxman first. Previously, there was no good examples of a character that wasn't UMA anywhere in the engine, and in this version of the game, we have one now. So we'll get started here, and you can see that instead of starting off as a ball like I used to before, I'm starting off as a lost soul that is made out of boxes. And this guy's kind of cool because what I did basically is just took a, a humanoid skeleton and there's no mesh render or anything attached to it. It's just like the Unity primitive boxes. So even though he's made out of boxes, you know, the animation is pretty fluid. Uh, well, as fluid as the animations are that are included in the engine anyway. And, uh, you know, he's got footsteps and stuff, and he just behaves like any other model, except for he's just a regular old Mechanim non-UMA model. So if you want to figure out how to attach just standard Mechanim models uh, that aren't UMA into the engine, you now have this uh, nice little box man here that you can use to do that. Next, let's take a look at the new Uma armor, or I mean the new Uma peasant gear. So I'm just going to swap out what my default character is right here. 
I'm just going to set my default character to the default Uma player instead. And now if we just save that and load up our game, then we'll start off with an Uma character instead of the Boxman. Okay, so we've now gone into the game and we have an Uma character and this Uma character has some Uma clothing on. And this is the first time we have Uma clothing in the game that isn't armor. So you can see here as well some of the new icons that we've got. So instead of those old ugly sample uh, text icons that we used to have, we now have you know some nice uh, grayed out icons and those are based on those RPG UI icons uh, that I was showing earlier. And what I've done is just upscaled them and added some backgrounds in and so our character, you know, he's completely naked, basically, according to the game, but he has uh, some nice clothing on, so he doesn't have to run around in his underwear anymore. You can also see right here on the main UI that instead of having those ugly sample icons, once again, we've actually got, you know, some sort of half-decent icons here. Um, they're, you know, pixel art and not very high res, but you can actually sort of tell what they are, you know? It's pretty obvious this is your character, this is your quest log. So next up, let's go and take a look at our dragon. So we're gonna jump out to the main menu. And we will load up one of our higher level characters here. This awesome dragon which was that dragon, let's see if I can find that again, over here by uh, Drummyfish, who created the rig and the animations, and Sethiel, who originally created the model, and it was just incredible that he released this as a public domain, because this thing is just awesome. It doesn't have any jump animations included with it, so you can see that when I sort of jump, he just sort of like kind of keeps slowly walking in the air. Um, but honestly, for a, a free public domain asset that you can use, you don't have to pay for, you know, you can sell games with this in it if you want. Um, I thought it was totally awesome. You can also see on this character here that my character has one of these um, new staffs and I, I'm actually going to cover the new prefabs in another episode. And there's a new icon for the staff and then you can see the new clothing icons as well. So instead of the old ugly sample icons, we actually have nice, uh, nice clothing icons. And you can see here as well the the item quality colors are showing. So this is a green quality necklace with a green background, and this is an Initiate's cloth hood, green quality, and then we have our Miner's cloth robe over here, blue quality, and then you can see sort of the grayed out slots. So it's just really easy uh, now to visually see whether you've got good quality or poor quality gear in your slots or whether your slots are completely empty. You can also see in our backpack that all of the icons or all of the items have pretty unique looking icons now and all of our abilities have pretty unique looking icons as well. We've got better icons for reputation now and we've got these nice uh, stars that we have for our achievements which I thought were really cute. They were in one of those sets that we looked at earlier. And we've got a consistent set of icons for our skills and our interactions. And you'll see um, these as we go through the game as well. And then of course there's new currency icons uh, that are available as well. So let's, um, looking around, you can see the skybox. This is the skybox from Luke LTD, uh, or Sorry, I'm totally mispronouncing that. Uh, let's go f see what that was again. That was Rust, Rust LTD, Luke dot Rust LTD. Okay, so anyway, totally awesome skybox. Um, I love the way it looks, and 
I've got a sort of ice texture on the ground here that was part of the mine test set and the ice texture I've made it partially transparent and so you can sort of you know as you go wander around here you get this neat effect of sort of the skybox and the rays actually shining through the ice and sort of like going down to this spot behind you. You can see the new interaction icons, and why don't we just take a trip through the world and see some of the other um, icons and textures and stuff that is in the game. We'll start off in, or I mean in the engine now, um, we'll start off in Birch Grove. You can see we've got new icons here for the casting as well. So Birch Grove is now using one of the new textures. It's, I think, one of the hand-painted stone textures on the ground here. As well as outside of the camp, we can now see that we're using a nice grass texture on the ground. You can see the new set of interaction icons here. We have our uh, new blacksmithing icon and our new crafting table, uh, new vendor icon, new bank chest icon. And as you can see here, instead of just having like an empty example level uh, with nothing in it, um, we've now actually got a, a real example level. And once again, the NERPG engine now includes uh, just like a thousands literally of, uh, of props and prefabs uh, and building kit pieces um, but we'll be covering those again in another episode. If we head out here we can go over to another level and on our way there we're gonna stop and we're gonna take a look at our newest addition to the pond over here and it's kind of hard to see but We've got a nice swimming fish right here. Let's actually hop off the mount just so we can maybe zoom in a little bit closer to him. There we go. So I hope you can see that. Anyway, there we go. There's the fish, and he's sort of wiggling around in the water there. And it would be pretty easy for me to just add a patrol path to him and have him like actually swim around in circles. But we now have an animated fish included with the engine, so you can use this fish in your games. Let's head over to the Sun Temple and we'll go take a look at uh, some more of the icons that are in use in the game here. So you can see all the interaction icons around on all the ovens and then we've got this uh, row of vendors here. We've got a seamstress and we can see the sewing icons right there. And why don't we just take a look at some of the items that these vendors have and we'll be able to see a larger selection of the potions. We have a bunch of different various potion items for different tiers of potions now. And we have the plate armors with their backgrounds and some of the other sets that don't have backgrounds on them. But there's uh, actually a nice variety and we've got different icons for every slot now as well. We've got some new necklace icons new interaction icons for jewelry and you can see our new copper ingots and our gems, our polished gems, our uh, bronze ingots and purple crystals and yellow crystals and for our leather gear same deal we've got new icons as here as well we've got leather pauldron icons that are new as well and for our weapon vendor, we've got lots of new different sword and claw and shield icons. And for our cloth vendor, we've got lots of different uh, cloth icons as well. Let's go head over to Light Fury Outpost. And we'll be able to see another example of some of the prefabs or some of the textures and the prefabs that we have. So you can see in Light Fury Outpost now, we've actually got like little houses behind our guys here. It's not just a bunch of boxes. And we're using that box man here. I've got like a, a black version of our um, 
non-UMA model here lying on the ground. And then over here against these huts, I've got the new versions of these guys sitting here, so they're not just boxes anymore. And we've got this um, nice sort of dirt texture on the ground as well. And then if we head over here, we can see our uh, dead guard he is now has the white hand symbol on his chest, and it's not just sitting there in a box. And then our other dead guard here has kind of a fake scroll sitting on the ground beside him, and he actually looks, you know, like a dead guard. Let's um, jump out of the engine now and go take a look at all of the icons that are available, because there's only a few there that we actually got to see so let's just take a look at all of them. We have many multicolored versions of those uh, ground cracks available. So we've got them in every color, and then we've got a brown background for the actual ground crack versions of them. And then we've got uh, just a bunch of these sort of little pixel art avatar icons, and then here's these cool cave icons. Eventually what I want to do is um, I want to have, like, say for example, the mine dungeon in the game will actually have like a dungeon guide or something. It'll have this as the, uh, as the um, sort of picture showing what that dungeon's going to be. And we've got a bunch of really cool shield icons that are included, a few coin icons, some different uh, crystals here, and a bunch of these different like avatars and such, and then all these different cloth armor pieces and some more avatars, and a whole pile of different colored um, bags, which is really cool. Um, so we've got the green, oh, green, gray, and different sizes, and then a lot of different sort of uh, food icons as well, and I'm going to be adding a, a bunch more food icons in the future. I've got several that aren't included in the project yet, but we've got, you know, cooking knives and cooking boards and, like, uh, eggs and all this crafting stuff, some gravestones, and then, you know, a few pumpkins, a cat, a whole bunch of uh, mining node icons, just various random staffs and stuff, and then a bunch of different wood and stuff you can use for crafting, different types of potion bottles available. And then this is the UI icon set that I made from those RPG icons. So, you know, whatever you sort of need to do for putting interactable icons over your character's heads in your game, there's a good basic selection here more potion icons, and then these all look like those uh, fantasy icons from Melee. This is just an, an absolutely beautiful set. They're super, super, super high quality. Um, and then we've got a bunch of different icons from Mind Test here, these sort of uh, powders and stuff, different types of grasses, and then these are all those flare icon variations. I think it was uh, Mumu who did these. Just totally awesome, you know, like arcane dagger, electric dagger, <laughs> fiery dagger, all sorts of cool stuff here. And then uh, these are the recolors I did of the uh, the hand-drawn icons. So you can see we've got, uh, you know, different colored uh, abilities for each arrow. So this can be like a poison one and, you know, this could, I don't know, be some unholy one or something like that. And We've got uh, normal attacks and special attacks, and then I was using these for like you know increased intellect or increased strength or increased speed, that kind of stuff, like for buff icons. And then I made a bunch of different recolors of these slash ones. So you can you know do what you want with those, and lots of different colored uh, droplets and sort of distortion spell effects, and these nice little uh, circular spell effects here. We got some cool multicolored leaves and different sorts of mists and a bunch of different like whirls and some shield blocks and claw stabs and then just like some nice random colors and stuff. I'm using these for like a special attack abilities and then uh, lots of different colored swords, just different elemental sword attacks. This one can be like a poison sword attack and We've got uh, different types of fangs here, so I've got like, you know, bloody fangs, and then these are like spider fangs, and we've got um, lots of different recolors of these uh, bracers, and 
all sorts of recolors of the leather armor, whole pile of potions, and then I did a bunch of recolors of these uh, arrows here. So we've got like ice arrows and poison arrows, fire arrows and stuff. And then a bunch of recolors of those other ice blocks. So this one's kind of like, looks like maybe lava exploding or a poison cloud explosion. And we've got a bunch of different recolors of, uh, of these here as well. So I have these for like a resurrection or like um, um, sort of aura abilities. And then here's all those uh, cool swords from Sethiel. And then we've got a bunch of different think these were some of the flare icons and then down here these are those sort of low res worm sun ones but you know even though they're, though they're low res something like these eyeballs here are really useful for you know like a detect stealth type ability or something because even low res they're still really clear and you can see or like these sort of purple ones like level up or maybe this lightning spell one here is pretty visible then I'm using these ones uh, as well for the avatars. And actually, let's just uh, jump back into the game and just go take a look at the avatars, because the avatars are actually pretty cool. And there's one level that I actually didn't go to yet where we can see another uh, nice use of the new free textures that are included with the engine. So we'll... Uh, jump back into our character and if you haven't seen the new yellow suit of armor yet there is now a yellow recolor of the Uma armor included in the uh, in the game and there's a brown and gray and a blue one as well so let's just jump on my character here and we'll go head over to the arena of trials And here we go. So in the Arena of Trials, I'll be building this up and making it look like an arena in a little bit here. But we've got this really cool cobblestone uh, texture on the ground. And we've uh, got a little radio here for the jukebox. And there's lots of different music available as well. And I will be covering this stuff um, in a later episode. But there is some absolutely amazing free music available on open game art. So all these songs are now included in the engine as well. There's um, like 14 songs and a couple battle themes or something like that. So enjoy that, definitely. It's all free. It's public domain. You can use it. You can sell it. You can do what you want. And then here's an example of some more of the uh, avatars that I'm using here. So for our angry bunnies, we've got this bunny avatar. For our trolls, we've got a troll avatar. For our necromancers, this warlock-looking thing. Some skeleton avatars and... For the goblins, we've got a nice goblin ranger, and then dragon avatars for the dragons as well. And we can actually uh, spawn this dragon here, and the dragon that I've been riding around, he's actually an enemy that you can fight. So if we wander over here, I'm going to try to find some better spell effects, because I just have these just temporary prefabs here. But you can see, you know, he's got attacks, and he's going to attack me, and he's going to do damage. And then if I don't watch it here, he's actually going to breathe fire on me again here. And he's going to just completely destroy me. There we go. Oh, and I'm almost dead. Fire is really dangerous. So we better do something about that. I'll just use my uh, life steal ability on him here. And now he's gone. So not only can you fight this awesome dragon, but you can also pick up a dragon scale off him and then ride him around as well. So that is everything that I wanted to cover for this episode. I hope you enjoyed that. And if you did, then 
don't forget to give the video a thumbs up or leave a comment in the comment section. And don't forget to go download any RPG engine from anyrpg.org slash downloads and you will have access to all of these icons for free. They're all public domain and you can do whatever you want with them. And you'll find a bunch of other goodies in there, uh, including over 2,500 prefabs from building kits. Um, and I'll be covering those in an upcoming episode once I just sort of finish filling out all of the content um, you can see that some of the example levels that I went through today were a little more polished than the others and we'll get them all polished up uh, using all of the different uh, new tools and features in the engine and it'll be a good demo of sort of what you can build just out of the box without having to go download stuff yourself so thank you so much for uh, tuning in and uh, I will see you next time